Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. This is Dr. C, Dr. Jeff Sarnick, Associate Dean of the Criminal Justice Program in the Social Sciences Department of Southern New Hampshire University Global. I want to welcome you to this latest edition of Dr. C's Corner. Very quickly, just some little tidbits. I hope you get something out of these. It's designed, or the intent behind doing these is to help you maybe be aware of things you weren't aware of, you know, like reading and what is working memory and attention span and all these things that I may not be aware of, but may be hindering some of my success or maybe advancing my success. This book, oops, I've got a couple of book recommendations today once I pick them up off the floor. Thank you, Gravity. One is called Proust and the Squid. Okay, and there's a story and science of reading, of the reading brain by Marianne Wolf, who's incredible, just an absolute genius, great book. And I always say, you know what, it's one thing for teachers to understand how learners learn, but I think it's just as important to find out, well, how do we learn? How do learners learn, right? So here's another really good book. Mine's online. Don't mind the stickers here. You know, I like to beat up my books pretty bad by Michelle D. Miller. And she talks about a lot of different things in here that we as learners, learners, not students, learners should be aware of that might be hindering some of our deep understanding and comprehension. And some of the things that scare the daylights out of us when we think we have a lot of reading ahead of us and how do we approach that? Okay, so anyway, working memory is critical, okay, to your ability to take a position in order to write that essay, in order to write that discussion board, right, where you're responding to other students and you have to take a, 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 an authentic position based upon fact. It's not opinion. It's not a discussion like you're in the hallway, right? It's about a particular topic that may be provocative, okay, but you have to be able to take a position. And how do you do that? You need the right language to be clear and accurate, all right? It's not uh, slang or street terminology or what they call colloquial. It is using precise language, and that doesn't mean they're $50 words, but to be clear. And how do you do that? Well, you have to read a lot. Hmm, what does that mean? You have to engage in what's known as sustained reading. Does that mean you have to sit down and try to read a book straight through for two hours? No, not at all, because you have to work with your brain, and your brain has to work with you, and you've got to train it and teach it. So how do you do that? Okay, you, well, first you got to do the minimize the risk of looking at the whole book. And, oh, my goodness, so the big e-book, all these pages I've got to read, and I have to make sense of it. I have to comprehend it. Well, you can't comprehend what's being read unless you read a lot. It's like calisthenics. It's like exercise. You build muscle the more you do it. The more you sustain your reading, okay, and not do scattershot reading, which is really by no fault of your own. Why? Because you are bombarded with information sources every day. Let's start with Google, all right, which can be the black hole of information relative to research. It's very good, no question about it. But you have the e-library, you have all this information going on around you. And where do you find it? And how do you become an effective, fluent reader so you can take that information and create a strong, authentic, plausible, coherent, an articulate position, which are all the hallmarks and characteristics of leaders, right? Leaders are problem solvers. And they can't be problem solvers unless they're in a position to utilize the English language to convince another body, convince a group of people that what they are recommending or what they're saying has merit. That's leadership. That's problem solving. It's communication. It's effective communication. It promotes understanding. So here's your strategy for today. If you have a lot of reading ahead of you, Break it down. Outline it first. Chunk it out so it doesn't look like this monumental mammoth task you'll never get through. So you avoid cherry picking and just snatching something here and maybe copy pasting wrong just to get through. You want to develop your intellect by developing your repository of long-term long -term memory where you can retrieve those words you've read in books, ebooks and otherwise, so that through your working memory, you can articulate a clear and authentic academic position. Okay, that's where you convince people. That's the hallmark of problem solving. Read 10 minutes at a time. Then reward yourself. Then go back to it. Make sure you, you know, take some notes. Keep back to triangulate with the physical and the mental and the emotional by calming your mind and heart rate down by taking the fear out of having to do a lot, a lot of reading at the same time. You don't. You chunk it out. 10, 12 minutes. Think about what you've read. How many times have you gone into a book, read 30 pages, and then go, oh, no, what the have I, what did I just read? Oh, no. 
That's a nightmare. Make it a game for your, for your brain. Deploy some selfish time for yourself. Shut that door. Turn the dance music off. You have to minimize your distractions and all the noise so your brain knows that it has some work to do, which can be playful, but it has some work to do, and you're going to game it. You're going to go ten, You're going to go 10 to 12 minutes. Take a break. Take a break. Reward yourself. Get your coffee. Then come back. Allocate your energy appropriately so you read fluently. Develop a strong repository of terms that you can retrieve and let it all rip, let it all hang out in an articulate and substantive post, essay, or research paper. It takes practice. It takes dedication. It takes learning. It takes self-discipline. This is not easy, but the, here you are. You're at the university. So here's my latest advice, counsel, for and tips for success in the world of online learning. This is Dr. C ringing out. Stay in touch. We have your back.